No, where are we? All right. back eric and linda live from workvine 209 i'm eric and i'm linda welcome to our live show today we're coming live from tracy california out here in hot tracy well it's not too bad today but we've been having a great show this whole month of july featuring uh, minority women in business and today we have oh gosh this lady is she does it all. She does it all. You're going to want to see her. I'm going to let in. Uh, what's your name again? <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> Introduce you. Introduce her. All right. So this young lady, uh, minority owned business in our community right here in Tracy, California. She is part of the city council. She has a nonprofit organization called Sow a Seed. She is helping change lives in the mental health realm. She works in schools, districts, public school, private school. She works for the county. She works for the city. She does it all. So we like to just welcome Rhodesia Ransom. Here she comes right now. There you go. <laughs> what's up? Hey, hey what's up? Everywhere. I need those kind of introductions. I'm going to take you <laughs> Thank you, for nice. Thank you for being a part of our show. And so as we get started, and I, I know you do a lot and we could probably take up a whole hour, but I want you to share with our listeners and our viewers a little bit about your nonprofit organization, um, SOACI, and how it got started. Awesome. Thank you. So I am the executive director of SOACI Community Foundation. We were started actually here in Tracy in 2000. And um, we used to just go in and volunteer in the schools. Um, the superintendent at the time, Dr. Franco, you know, he needed a partnership to work with in trouble or just needed mentorship or misunderstanding. Uh, we would go in there and we would help with mediation and working with young people. We really found that a lot of our young people were in need of not just mentorship, but mental health and really more understanding. Um, here in Tracy, you know, we're a growing community and we're in the school district where culturally we had a lot of suburban growth happening here. And really the teachers weren't used to students that they didn't like them all the time. And a lot of culturally, um, cultural differences were happening. And we were able to come in um, with our organization over the last 16 years and work with helping repair scarce climate, helping bring restorative practices in with teachers and students and help uh, really teach young people how to be in better control of their mental health and their lives. So that's what we do. Um, we are in schools throughout the county. Um, we also have a center here in Tracy where young people without COVID, pre-COVID, you know, and after yeah. they can come in for different school programs um, and they can do either prevention or intervention. Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, I remember Rhodesia meeting you years ago, um, and we were a part of the mayor's, the MCYSN group, and um, we were just getting started, and we went to gang prevention seminar out in San Francisco, and I remember, like, meeting you and remember that... Um, I was like, man, this lady is so smart. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> she just was like, you were amazing to me and you still are amazing to me. So, um, you know, and I know how hard it is because we were um, starting our nonprofits basically in Tracy at around the same time and, and all the obstacles that we had to face and that we still face. Um, but I will say that both of our nonprofits have grown so much. I mean, through all the heartache and everything that um, we've done to help the community, it, it really is starting to reap, reap its benefits. So, um, 
and and how much your um, organization, so a seed, really pours in directly to the youth that need it the most. And so we need more. Uh, we need more of your programs everywhere, really. Yes. So thank you for all that you do. Thank yeah. You. Um, that we got to work on the gang prevention. And yes, we were, it was 2005, 2007, and we were working on our community. I really think that we need more of that in our community. We need collaboration. Together, we can close the gaps. You guys are working on digital divide. We're working on mental health. And uh, yeah, it's been, it was an awesome experience. I was getting like, God, really smart about you. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, cool. so what made you um, get started? You know, like what what drove so a seed? And, and you know what? I have a comment, too. Before you get started, uh, it sounds like uh, someone's saying your sound is kind of going in and out a little bit. My sound? Yeah. OK. Go ahead. Let's. Uh, Okay, um, there may be another way for me to, to log in if you want. I can go in through uh, and put a, heads, a headset on. Um, are you able to hear me now? Yeah, it does fade in and out just a little bit. Okay, I apologize about that. You said what, yeah. we're, how were we able to get started? Or Yes. Yeah, well, so what really, like, what drove you to really focus on mental health kids in schools? So really what was pushed us to go all the way in that mental health direction is because we used to be told and to work with young people who were being suspended and expelled a lot. And we started to work with those young people and the science case managers to mentors. And it always boils down to some sort of childhood trauma or some sort of uh, situation that the adult that was in charge of working with these young people did not know how to address or did not know assess and as a result um, their, their mental health was continuing to struggle and you know adding more trauma on top of trauma who should be in school who are now out of school the suspension expulsion and and what started as us coming in, you know, as needed, as a hobby, as a help, turned into like a huge need, and we really needed to find more resources and more mental health support for our students. And um, sometimes mental health um, is not just about clinical. So having the mentors there, so that a young person who maybe just needed an adult that they can trust and speak to was available is very instrumental in the work that we do. And we started out of necessity, out of, um, working with the young people, making sure that even some of our gang, uh, gang uh, students that we were working with, making sure that we can give them the support that they need to feel safe um, and what's in that life and safe in just being able to approach adults with their concerns. That's really good. That's good. I mean, kids need this today. Yeah, you're uh, Mr. Kramer is saying no, uh, no sound. Talk to me. Yeah, we can hear you, but yeah, it was kind of fading in and out a little bit. Okay. But um, yeah, we're good. If you have a headset, we can try that too. But we'll just continue on. And if you got a headset, you got it. If you don't, then uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, I'll link in on another article. Don't worry, go ahead. Yeah, so um, when you talked about mentors, I know you do an event every year. I think it's called Boys to Men, or is that a group? <laughs> <laughs> Men to Boys. <laughs> well, Boys to Men is a group, but the conference is the Boys to Men Youth Development Conference. Yes. Uh, and we've actually done that conference um, since 2009. We started that conference. And the reason we started that conference is because when we were working with young people um, in schools and not able to, we can't get to every single kid, right? Yeah. Having the conference was an opportunity to open our services up to kids that we don't 
see every day, still give them tools and expose them to some adult mentors. And just like when we go to get our professional development, our young people also need that professional development. And so, yes, we started that conference back in 2009. And we normally would have it in December. Um, I, we don't know what we're going to do. We'll, we'll have, we're talking about whether or not we can do something virtual. Um, this pandemic, you know, doesn't let up on us. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that was a powerful conference and it, it still is very powerful. But I even had my son attend years ago when he was in high school and it helped him. So kids do need other resources that will help them become successful and, you know, um, think about their options as they transition out of high school into manhood or, you know, but they're getting anything at that moment, but when they need that information, it manifests, they, you know, it, it shows up when they need it and, and introducing them to concepts of, uh, with authority. Um, and sometimes, you know, adults that we put into our kids don't understand them and teaching the young people saying, you know what, if, you know, Miss Jackson, yeah you know it truly is sowing a seed right <laughs> <laughs> it truly is yeah. sowing a seed because it you know it takes a little bit for um the seed to get nourished to really bloom and grow um and so at least you're planting the seeds for when it's ready to harvest they'll go back into their toolbox and yeah, I learned this at the conference. And so um, that is powerful. Yeah, yeah, how that's did, good. How did you come up with the name Sow a Seed? <laughs> so we had our founding board uh, and we, we were just talking about, you know, who we wanted to be. And we were saying, you know what, we want to give these kids all the knowledge and, you know, we want to kind of plant those seeds. And just like you plant a seed, you have to nourish it. You have to... Yeah. Seed and walk away. You actually mm -hmm. cultivate that thing, right? And so our organization the concept is when we work with a young person, we don't work with them and then they're there for a few weeks and then we say bye. Uh, we yeah. want to know that we are there and that they need us and that they need us to connect them with some of those services. So we came up with Soul Seed and and people were going, well, it doesn't say so seed children, so seed and whatever. <laughs> it was all planting those seeds and helping those young people. Yeah, that's good. And, 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 you know, even as you develop these young people, they become parents and adults and have kids. Right. And they're yeah. sowing back into their family. And so it's not just about that one individual. It's about the future of their legacy that's to come. So, I mean, you're doing some wonderful work and you're doing a great job. Um, and I'm excited at what you're doing around San Joaquin County. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's really cool. Really cool. I'm going to switch gears just for a minute because I know you're part of city council and you've been doing that for a while. And I, I look at city council as like, man, you know, they're making a difference. They're helping make a change in our community right here and right now. So what is that like? And maybe you could share like, you know, what inspired you to even become city council? No, you know, you're right. It's about being there. It's about making a difference. So I grew up, um, I was born and raised in San Francisco. My grandmother was a missionary. So I grew up in service, servant life, right? You were a servant leader, public servant. That's what you did. Um, that was just the natural thing to me. And when you look at like politics and being involved in politics, you guys normally see the public normally sees it's like politics is horrible. Politics is why nothing good happens, right? But it should be about the people. It should be about doing something and not about like who wants to be something, right? Um, and when you look at how people work in politics, the best ones are the ones who are like actually listening to the needs or finding out how we can serve the needs of the community. So I got involved. Um, I'd been on the planning commission for a while. I'd been on all kinds of different boards. And um, initially, I got 
got involved in politics because I wanted to be on the Board of Supervisors um, back in 2012. The County Board of Supervisors is where all of our county social services are housed. And even right now, when you look at this pandemic and you look at what needs to happen with, you know, health care, the general hospital is out of this, is under the County Board of Supervisors. When you look at how we responded, public health director to saying mask on, mask off, indoors, outdoors, you know, and those very critical, um, important things and working with mental health and not having mental health in our community, which is housed at the San Joaquin County Board of Supervisors. If, you know, somebody's asking me that, I'm like, you know, I could do that, you know, because to me, it wasn't a political job. Um, I learned the hard way that, like, anytime you do anything that's elected, whether you want it to be political or not, it will be. But um, on the same council, we've been able to do some really, um, great things, you know, we just recently um, voted to do a ballot measure to ask the community if they wanted to want to manage the development, which will bring uh, public transit here and also build housing and jobs to go with that transit. Um, it's a requirement for the Valley Link Regional Rail as well as, you know, most commuter trains to be able to have housing that's going to serve um, those trains and then connectivity to the community. These are green um, projects to help build the community of the environment. Um, so we've done, you know, things like that. We've done some things that people think are controversial. The cannabis is legal now in California. And so we have said, you know what, we're going to be intentional about how cannabis works in our community. And so we have the cannabis ordinance happening um, here. And so those are some of the things. And, and how I got involved is just serving on the commission, serving on boards, and um, part of my background is public administrations uh, in my education. I've actually taught public policy and public finance at the graduate level. So saying, you know what, let me practice what I preach, right? I'm telling my <laughs> you know, this is how you build a good community. So yes. Um, yes. I, I decided to go ahead and start doing that. Wow. That is awesome. I, you know, um, Shaylin, our daughter, she's looking into um, public health administration. So um, as her focus in college. And so um, I am going to like refer her to you <laughs> to pick your brain. <laughs> but you know, all that you said, it just equates to like countless hours of your time and everything that you poured into. I mean, time is, um, is something you can never give back and it's so precious and it's it's like i hear all this time that you pour into the community and that's precious you know for you to is precious. you know it's very precious but i will tell you that you know i've had jobs that i didn't like before and then when you're in a job that you don't like time just goes by so slow and you you don't want to spend time there. but when you're doing something that is it's me, right? You know how people are always looking for their purpose and looking for, you know, what they want to be or what they want to do. For me, it's just like, you know, I just jump in. My grandmother used to say, you know, was younger, and you'll say, oh, they said there's a problem with this. They said there's a problem with that. And she would go, you know, and if you would say, like, well, somebody should do something. She would go, well, aren't you somebody? And who is that? <laughs> aren't you somebody? <laughs> I like it. <laughs> So those are, you know, for me, this is, it is hard work, but it's like, I'm so excited about the end goal and like seeing the positive outcome at the end. Like I'm really fighting to like get to the, across the finish line and say like, look what we did. You know, we actually made a difference. And so it is exhausting um, because with this good work that we do, there's this political aspect that, you know, is not attractive, but you got to fight the good fights, do good work. So, yeah. yeah. And you do it passionately. I mean, you do your work in everything that you do. You do it with passion. And, you know, that that makes up for all the hours that you pour into it is, you know, the outcomes that you get out of it is, you know, that's rewarding in itself. So woo, thank you, Miss Ransom, for doing all that you, Mrs. Ransom, because <laughs> you've been married to KT for since 2002. I read that in your bio and you have two two girls and one of them's in college and the other one's going to college, right? My, my youngest daughter, 
um, here, uh, was a senior for the class of 2020. I, you know, so she's graduated, right? <laughs> My um, my middle child, uh, Kaya, is at UC Santa Barbara. She's a junior there in the college uh, program. And then he um, is just graduating. He's in his lab, wrapping up his final classes at um, Nebraska, University of Nebraska. So, um, yeah. Three, nice. three kids nice. in college. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. I know it's crazy because I had three kids in college. No, actually two and then one going into college. But anyhow, it's yeah. it's all good. Yeah. Something you said a second ago is about, you know, helping make things better for the community. And, I, you know, I always looked at, you know, politics can be very challenging, but it seems like, you know, for me, right, I'm like, OK, how can we make our community better, make it stronger together? Why do we have to fight back and forth to make it better? It becomes, like you said, political. It's about what's the best thing for the community at large, right? For us as a community member. So it seems easy from my side of the right. table. <laughs> Don't be like me, Eric. Don't be naive. I was so naive. I was like, even knowing that, like, there are people, you know, when you run for office, people are like, they'll just decide they don't like you because you're political or they have their friend or whatever. And I'm like, okay, fine. But we're going to get here and we're going to do all this great work together because it's all about the community and it's all about working together. And I will tell you, that's the biggest lesson that I learned. I was so naive um, getting started thinking, like, you know what? We're all here for the same reason and we are all there. Everyone's always there for reason but we have different ways of doing it in regards to i, I want to say that you know for me homelessness is a, a growing issue that we've seen all over the place and wanting to get in there and say you know what let's go and figure out the best way to help people on the street um, it's good for businesses it's good for our city um, for economic development we always spend money cleaning up the homeless encampments so let's be intentional but what I've learned, and you've actually seen a lot of this with this recent pandemic, people, the, the, their beliefs, their personal beliefs affect how you approach things. So, and, and it really gets personal for some people because they're like, well, I don't like your approach, you know, <laughs> I want to do this. Yeah. And so it's really, for me, it's always about like, okay, fine. You don't like my approach. Let's try to find an approach that we both like. Okay. So what don't you like about my approach? What's your idea? We got a better idea, so it's yeah. a better, better idea, or at least an idea, right? Yeah, yeah. That that seems pretty. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. 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 it seems fair <laughs> on this side. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I went in, and then I'm like, oh, that's just not how this works, right? Oh, oh man, wow. Um, and if you follow John Lewis, and he's always talking got to go up there and get in good trouble. And and I'm going, you know what? I guess that's what I'm doing. I'm getting in good trouble because I just want to be able to work with as many people as possible. You know, I had a chance to work with, with Linda. I had a chance to work with Eric, not as much as Linda, but with so many different organizations in the community. The homeless, the Tracy Community um, Connection Center, working with them on homelessness and helping their organization and the homelessness task force, you know, helping support them. It may not be my personal area of expertise, but I can support you if you're doing something good. And that's what this is all about. This is about yeah. how we can, you don't have to do everything, but you should really get behind the people who are doing good stuff. And that's 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 just how I do it. Um, I don't know how everybody else does it, but that's how I do it. And that's why I enjoy what I do um, because it's just like it's really fun just Here's this dilemma. Here's the, here are the resources. Let's connect the resources to the work. So, wow. Yeah. Well, that's good. I, I thought about running, but I don't know. I like the work that I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm safe. I know I said don't be naive, but we need people who 
just want to do good stuff. Like when I say there's a difference between people who want to be something and someone who wants to do something like don't tell yourself out because you didn't get a political degree or because, you know, you don't have a bunch of political friends. If you're a person and you see something you can do, you should, you should go for it. Um, there's so many other opportunities. There's commissions. If you don't want to do the elected route, we have a planning commission that helps plan our city. We have a parks and recs commission that helps decide how we're going to spend money on grant funds as well as how we're going to um, maintain our parks in our community. We have an arts commission that decides how arts are going to show up. There is room and you should not just I know people always laugh and go, I'd never do that. Don't ever say never because we have so many needs. And sometimes you might get involved because it's that one thing that ticks you off about politics. And you're like, I'm going to go fix that. Yeah. yeah. And I, I didn't realize, you know, that they had all those commissions right. that you can be a part of to help better your city. And I, I think that's a great opportunity for people who want to get started, to want to see change in our community join some of those commissions i think i have a full plate right now but <laughs> but but it sounds interesting and it sounds exciting how would somebody um join a committee or a commission if they wanted to so okay so the commissions come up every so i was on planning commission as an example so every couple of years um they rotate so we have five commissioners our transportation is our largest it's actually it's too large the transportation commission with issues of you know bus routes and um, transit issues and things like that, and so um, we rotate them. So kind of like the elections, you know, you do um, you replace two people one year, and then a couple of years later you replace three people. So, you know, mm -hmm. the um, we most recently replaced someone on the commission of aging. We replaced somebody on the mosquito abatement commission. I was just, that guy, I was going. Why are you interested in mosquitoes again? Tell me more. <laughs> so, uh, so every couple of years, openings happen, but there's five people. Some people serve a couple of terms, or some people serve one term and they don't want to do it again. Um, so, you know, so you just apply. Um, you fill out an application. It's and then you go to an interview with the city council members. We do rotating subcommittees, so it's not people on the council. We interview you, we find out what your passion is, and we actually need more people um, signing up to serve on these commissions. Mm -hmm. Because people are not interested, they don't want to apply. I shouldn't say they're not interested. We extend the recruitment, and then we'll have people come complain about like parks or transportation or planning, and I'm like, yeah. get involved on one of these commissions. Yeah. Don't just get your voice heard, but actually help you know do the homework so yeah. that's how you do it you just fill out an application these um with all of our commissions they happen years but because there's so many and so many people there's all okay there you go eric yeah uh we'll Join see commission, eric. yeah let me know when it opens <laughs> i do that i will do that yeah i might be interested who knows yeah so i know before we wrap up um, you know, I was looking at this link right here. Can you share a little bit about this? Yes. Uh, so earlier, um, you know, I'm on the city council and earlier I mentioned to you guys that that was my interest into politics. That's what, uh, when someone came to me and said, you know what, there's this opening uh, in the county and here's what's happening. I got involved because of looking at all of these social services that are having supervisors and looking at Response and just knowing that we can do better. Just I've been involved in some communities um, and I know that we can do better. So I'm actually running to uh, be on the San Joaquin County Board of Supervisors to oversee the things that really um, protect our community everything from jobs to health care to mental health services, homelessness, prevention, and intervention. All of those things are happening at our County Board of Supervisors. And Someone to represent this area, um, and this this district includes Tracy Mountain and so it would be at the county, making sure that we have that representation. Wow, 
That's really good. I don't know where you find the time. I mean, we right. do so many interviews and it seems like so many people are doing so much. And I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> I need to do more. I mean, we haven't even mentioned the, all the other things that you're involved in. Like, I know you've done town hall meetings um, for, um, you know, the political, not uh, George Floyd and, you know, the racial disparities that, you know, is happening in the country and in the city. And so, you know, you do that and your mom and um, you're not grandma yet. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, executive director for your um, nonprofit that you co-founded, you know, I, the list goes on and on. So I don't know. And the main part of the thing is, you know, your wife and I know how it is to take care of your husband and, you know, that, yeah. that takes up a lot of your time, too. Yeah, <laughs> man. And where does my time go? <laughs> you know, it's, um, it's kind of a blessing to be in a family where everyone is busy. You know, my husband's very active. You know, he works for Alameda County Probation, and he's also a coach. Um, he has other interests. Our kids are now grown. And then all of the things that are housed at the County Board of Supervisors are very related to the work that I already do with um, you know, I'm on the children's task force, a group of people in the county. So, you know, and so it's not exhausting. I will say there's sometimes uh, that it's not ready on time, but you know, we do okay. <laughs> yeah. Good. Wow. So yeah, I know we, we talked about a lot. We just want to thank you for all your work that you do in the city with your nonprofit, helping change lives, helping children, you know, disadvantaged to become advantaged, right? <laughs> or, or, and, and sowing those seeds in the lives of our community and, you know, making change one day at a time. And so thank you for all your hard work. Good luck in your running for supervisor. And then, yeah, thanks for just being a part of our show today. Thank you. I really appreciate that you were doing this you know, let people see what's happening in our community and what's available. I've watched some of your other shows and they're really good. Um, you've had really great conversations. So I really just think that this is a, a great um, contribution to the community. Great, great center that you guys have. So thank you so much uh, for allowing me you know, to come here and have this conversation. Which I really enjoyed. Thank you. Any last words, Linda? I think I'm frozen. Oh, she froze. All right. Well, we're going to pop her in over here. <laughs> All right. Hello. Hey, come back next Tuesday and Thursdays for our live events. And so today's Thursday. So we'll see you on Tuesday. See you on Tuesday. Thank you, Rhodesia. Awesome. Thank you guys for having me. Have